Hello, fifth grade. You're going to notice that we are going to be skipping module 12, lesson two. Um, it's really involved and it's um, a lesson that I think is better suited for like if you were in person <laughs> because there's a lot of steps and it just is way too much to try to do, especially this time of the school year. Um, so we are going to skip module 12 lesson 2 and we're going to jump right to module 12 lesson 3 and we're going to be representing and interpreting measurement data in line plots so you're going to be able to make a line plot to display data in fractional measurements and use a line plot to solve problems okay so a line plot is basically just a number line and then the x's along the top are going to be the number of that have that same amount or that same number in them. So for example, so for this one it says students measured different amounts of water into their beakers for an experiment. If the total amount of water is redistributed equally, how much water will be in each beaker? So first we're going to complete this line plot by recording the data for the beakers. The first two amounts have been recorded. So we can see that one fourth has already been recorded and one and one fourth. So one half, we're just going to put an X above one half. I like to cross them off as I put them on here because it just makes, that, that way you know that one I already did. Three fourths, we're going to cross off. Now we have another one fourth, so that just means I'm going to put another X above it. So I have two in the one fourth column. Another one fourth and another one fourth. One and one half another one-fourth, three-fourths, another one-fourth, and a one and three-fourths. Okay? So we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six beakers with one-fourth cup of water, one beaker with one-half cup, two beakers with three-fourths cups, one beaker with one and one-fourth cups, one beaker with one and one half cups and one beaker with one and three fourths cups. So counting the X's tells you how many of that number you have. Okay. So how many cups of water are there in the beakers that contain one fourth cup? So if I want to add all these up, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we would have six times one fourth, which is six fourths which is equivalent to how many four-fourths are in there? One. And then there are um, two-fourths remaining. So one and two-fourths, or we could say one and one-half cups of water are all together in the one-fourths. So now we want to know what is the total number of cups of water all together? So I already know this right here is one and one-fourth, one and one-half. So if I were to add a half to that, right, I would have two cups. What is three? So this is these together, okay, is two cups. If I were to add three-fourths plus three-fourths, I would get six-fourths, which again is the same as one and two-fourths or one and one-half, okay? So this is one and one half. Let's combine our one fourth, or let's combine our one and one half with our other one and one half. So these two together are going to be three cups. And then if I combine my one and one fourth with my one and three fourths, I'm going to have three cups. Sorry, I'm just going to move that. So we've got two, three, and three. So three plus three is six, plus two is eight. So we have eight cups of water. See how it was easier to combine the ones that had the same denominator first? And then you can, you know, redistribute because these ended up being a whole. So that's how that worked out really well. So how many beakers are there all together? Well, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There are 12 beakers. Now, if we want to redistribute the water equally among all the beakers, how many cups of water will be in each beaker? 
So what we're going to have to do is divide our eight cups into the 12 beakers. Er. Sorry. We got to go this way. Sorry about that. So 12 into 800 would go to... No, not two times. Actually, no, this would just be, I apologize. Oh my gosh. You guys probably hate me. So it would be eight twelfths. Right? So then if I do eight twelfths, if I were to divide my top and bottom by four, I would get two thirds. So there would be two thirds cups in each beaker. I'm sorry guys. Gosh. I'm glad it's the end of the year. <laughs> I don't know that I could go up higher in, in the math you guys do. I mean I I remember this when I did it but man if I don't teach it all the time it, it makes it difficult. All right so what you have to do is there are eight cups in 12 beakers. Eight out of 12. So eight twelfths. We're going to divide the top and the bottom by four so we get two thirds cups is how much will be in each beaker. Uh, oh, mama mia. All right. Lamar divides three two-pound boxes of cherries into smaller boxes. The first box is divided into boxes weighing one-eighth pound each. The second box is divided into boxes weighing one-fourth pound each. And the third box is divided into boxes weighing one-half pound each. Find the number of one-eighth, one-fourth, and one-half pound cherry boxes. Then graph the results on a line plot. So first we're going to need to use division to find the number of one-eighth pound, one-fourth pound, and one-half pound boxes were made from the three original two-pound boxes of cherries. So we had two-pound boxes of cherries. The very first box is divided into boxes weighing one-eighth of a pound. Okay? And if each box is two pounds, we're going to do two, two divided by one eighth, which is two times eight, which equals 16. Two divided by one fourth, so that would be two times four, which equals eight. So we have 16 one eighth boxes. We have eight one fourth boxes. And two divided by, or two times two would be four, so we have four half boxes. So four half boxes, eight one fourth boxes, and 16 one eighth boxes. So if I were to make a line plot, here's my zero, here's my hole, and I need it, so in half, and then if I do it in half again, I've got one fourth. This would be two fourths, this would be three fourths, and then I need eighths, so I'm going to do in half again. So you got one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths. Okay? So I need 16 one eighths. So I'm not going to be able to go all the way up to the top, but if I do them next to each other, that just shows me that they're all, these are all one eighths. Okay. I need eight one fourths. And then I need four one halves. So how many more one eighth pound cherry boxes are there than one half cherry boxes? So we have 16 minus 4. 16 minus 4 would be 12. There are 12 more 1 8th pound cherry boxes than 1 half cherry boxes. Okay? So this what we had to divide in order to tell us how many of each size. How many of each box? Size box. Charles poured different amounts of milks, milk into some bowls. Show the amounts on the line plot. Okay, one eighth, 
one fourth, one half, one fourth, one eighth, one fourth, one fourth, and one fourth. So there's our number line. We have two one eighths, one two three four five one fourths, and one one half. What is the total amount of milk that Charles poured? So we've got, this would be 2 eighths. We'd have 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have, one, oh, this is in pints. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we'd have 5 fourths here, and we have 1 half here. So we need to convert them all to the same denominator. So let's convert them all to eighths. So 5 fourths times 2 over 2 would be 10 eighths. And then 1 half times 4 over 4 equals 4 eighths. So we're going to have 2 eighths plus 10 eighths plus 4 eighths, which equals... 12 through 16 eighths and 16 eighths is the same as there are two eight eighths in there so they're the same as two and they're in pints pints if Charles redistributed the milk equally among the bowls how much milk would he pour into each bowl so how many bowls are there one two three four five six seven eight right so there are eight bowls so if you pour the two pints into the eight bowls and I divide by the top and the bottom by two there would be one fourth pint in each bowl all righty a scientist records the weight of her mineral specimens. Make a line plot to display the data. So we've got um, a list of measurements here. So we're going to make our line plot 0 to 2. We're going to have 1 in the middle. We've got halves 1 and 1 half. And then we also have fourths. So this would be 1 fourth. This would be three fourths. This would be one and one fourth. One and three fourths. Okay. So that's how you determine, right? How what you need on your number line is to look at your denominators here. So one half x, one half one, one half one fourth, one and one half. 1 and 1 half, 1, 1 and 1 fourth. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 specimens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 specimens. So I know I've got them all there. What is the total weight of the mineral specimens? So I'm going to add them all up. So I've got a 1 fourth here. I've got a 1 and 1 half here. I've got a 2 here. 1 and 1 fourth, and I've got a 3 here. So the first thing I'm going to do is add all my whole numbers. So I have 1, 2, 3, so I've got 6 whole number in my whole numbers, and then I've got 2 1 fourths, so I've got 2 fourths, and I've got a 1 half. Well, I know that 2 fourths is equivalent to 1 half. So if I re re rename that to 1 half, 6 plus 1 half plus 1 half would equal 7. So there are 7 ounces total. Oh, I forgot the 1 fourth here. Ah, sorry. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This should be 7. I apologize. So there should be 8 ounces. I made a mistake. I apologize. So there should be 8 total ounces. That was my bad. Okay. What is the combined weight of the one half ounce and the one and one half ounce specimens? So the half ounce specimens are one and one half. The one and one half ounce specimens are three. So it would be four and one half ounces. 
How much more do the one and one half ounce specimens weigh than the one half ounce specimens weigh? So we would subtract three minus one and one half, and that would give us one and one half ounces. Next page. We're going to use the line plot for 8 through 11. Anita grows aquatic plants in jars. The jars hold different amounts of water. Anita records the amounts of water the jars hold in a line plot. What is the total liquid volume of the water in the jars? Okay, so we can see we have one half here, right? Add that together. One hole here three holes here, one and one half, and then we have six here. So that's what we have in each part. I'm going to add my whole numbers together, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then my fractions, one half plus one half is one, so there are twelve gallons total. How many more jars have two gallons of water than have one and one half? So if we have three here and one here, there are two more jars. How much water is in all the one fourth gallons? One half gallon. See how it's nice if you write it across the top, it helps you with some of these other questions. If Anita transfers the water in the one gallon jars to three fourth gallon jars, how many three fourth gallon jars does she need? So we're going to need two. She's going to transfer. So if she's got 12 full gallons and we want to transfer that to three fourth gallon jars. So I'm going to do 12 times 4 over 3. No, that's not right. That's not right. You're going to need more. Oh, in the one gallon. I apologize. <laughs> so she wants to transfer this. The three of these, not 12 of them, three of them, <laughs> into the three-fourth gallon jars. So then it would be, you would need to, need to do three times four over three. You need to inverse this. So that would give you 12 over three, which is the same as four. So she would need four jars. Okay, and we are going to not do the number 15, or number 12. So on your independent work, I want you to complete everything on the first front of it, and everything on the back. We should be able to do. All right, so you're just going to do the one math lesson this week, and you'll have one more next week, and then you'll need to have everything turned into me, so that way we can finish out our year. All right, have a great rest of your day. Bye.